Um, so um, what's in store? Um, the, the purpose of the app was we wanted to solve three problems. So um, the, the first problem was at the moment, people are finding it really difficult to find certain products. Um, I think flour is probably one of the biggest ones at the moment. No one can seem to get hold of flour. Um, and uh, the next the next problem was uh, to solve. Uh, it was trying to avoid queues. So if say you you went you were going to go to Tesco's and you see there's a massive queue outside, um, you could have a look on the app and see if there's any other shops um, nearby that may not be as busy selling that selling that product. Um, and the other, which would lead, which would lead on to solving the next problem, which was to help um, independent stores, um, because there might be shops nearby that you might not, you might not necessarily know that they they also sell flour. It's just that everyone seems to go, they make a beeline straight for the major supermarkets. Um, so those are the three problems um, that What's in Store um, tries to solve. Um, and uh, we first drafted out the user journeys of possible. Um, scenarios. There were some um, that we considered, but obviously were sort of a bit too much outside the scope of this project. Um, and then we uh, created a wireframe for it. Um, so as you can see, very simple interface, and you can see two options here um, for I found a product and I'm looking for a product. Um, so you can click on I found a product, upload a photo, um, and uh, or, or you can tag it on a map. Um, so, yeah, so we had a little look, um, created a design um, and uh, created this uh, React app. So, as you can see, we um, we changed the colouring a little bit. We thought it was a little bit, uh, a bit more fun. Um, you hopefully can see that it's a take on the word Watson. Um, so, to have a look, to try and find, try and find something. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to tie up um, the the requests on the front end to the back end. So there's actually two um, parts to this project. We made a React um, client and a .NET Core API, um, and we did manage to get a few things working. So um, when you try and find a product, um, the idea is you can search for something and it should appear on uh, Google Maps. Um, but unfortunately, we weren't able to get that far. Um, so what I've been able to do is um, I quickly. <laughs> I apologize for the um, for the really bad design. Um, this is probably to the extent, this is as good as my front end uh, design goes, um, but it should give a clear overview of what you can actually achieve with it. So um, we'll start off, uh, there's the actual functionality, you don't have to upload an image, it's just that for, um, you can just upload text if you want, but I thought I'd show you because this was pretty neat. Um, so the, when you when you take a photo, if you've got the functionality enabled on your phone, for example, um, it will it'll tag geodata, GPS information to your photo. Um, so I'll take this image. Um, it's it's actually it's a it's a picture of the Southmead um, Blood Donation Center. So I wouldn't recommend doing your shopping there. Um, but it was one of the first photos that I had on my phone, which I know had GPS data on it. So we'll use that, and we'll submit that. And you can see here that it's come back with uh, three three objects or three three bits of data. So you've got your file name. So what actually happens is on the server side, it'll take the image, it'll compress it down to a much more manageable size for storage, and it'll um, spit back out a, a unique ID for that for, for that file. So it sends that back to you, and also comes back with the uh, latitude and longitude data. Uh, and you can see here, then it fires off another request, and it'll bring back a load of places um, associated, or basically places that are nearby. Um, and as you can see, true to true to word, um, you can see all of these. Uh, oh, there's a bus stop there. I don't know if it sells anything there, but uh, but yeah, obviously you can um, you could filter a lot of these, so um, food or grocery stores, whatnot. Um, so we'll go. Let's see if I can. Where's South Need? There it is. This. So I'll say this is where I am. So. I select that, and uh, let's say I found one of the donations. So they're selling apples. So um, we'll submit that. Hopefully, we'll get a success at the bottom. Yep, yeah, brilliant success. So that's the user journey of adding a product to the store. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't get as far as doing the actual search functionality, but I can show it to you in a really nice um, uh, JSON uh, format. Um, so you can see here, um, I've done a search for um, products with test. And you can see here, um, oh, look, there's Avon, Avon and Somerset Police. They're also selling test products. 
um, uh, and you can also get tests uh, at the blood donation centre too. Um, but yeah, so if we do a search for Apple, we should hopefully see, um, there we go, so there's the one that we just added there. Um, and the idea being with this is we would then return, uh, actually I think I'll show you bread because I think I've got so yeah, so you can see here that we've got bread, we've got loaf of bread, so we've got lots of different bread products, so it acts as a wild card. So it should hopefully hopefully bring back um lots of different products that hopefully will be associated with your keyword. Um and the idea is then that you could use these latitude and longitude um data um to pinpoint to pinpoint these products on a map so you can see essentially where is um where your closest product is. And so hopefully that should help everyone else. It should help avoid queues. It should help independent stores. Um, these also come back with a, um, when you do a search, it'll come back with a timestamp. Um, so you can see how recent this was. So, you know, I, you know, if you saw a post that it was uploaded, say a few days ago, chances are that product may not be in the store. Um, and we could obviously, we could display this as a traffic and in a sort of traffic light uh, system. Um, we experienced a few challenges with this one. I so at the moment we're using Google Maps. Obviously Google Maps, um, if anyone's ever used it, can get quite expensive. Um, there's also a lot of different APIs associated with Google Maps. So um, there's there's a learning curve. A lot of it is quite self-explanatory and easy, but it's massive and there's a lot to know and understand to get it working. So, um, but not as much as OpenStreetMap is what I wanted to use um, because it's more cost effective. So would have preferred to have used the OpenStreetMap and the Overpass API, but couldn't quite get it working on the first day. So resorted to Google Maps, which is what I'm more familiar with. Um, the other challenge we had was React on our team. We had lots of different ex levels of experience with React and we weren't able to get quite everything working. Um, but I, you know, with, I think what we got overall in the length of time we had um, is pretty ace. Um, it's obviously worth mentioning that there are similar products or that there are similar applications out there already. So Good60, Deliveroo, Just Eat, Supermarket Deliveries. Um, so obviously the, the, the service is already there, and, but in the sense, but obviously at the moment, a lot of these slots, a lot of the delivery times, they're either, uh, it's very difficult to get hold of one or priorities being given to um, say vulnerable um, customers. So the idea for this was to give people a chance if they're just trying to look for that one one or two products that they're like running low on. Um, that essentially, that was the problem that we were trying to solve. Um, the the future um, idea that we had for this app um, going forward is that we could add the ability, obviously because we, we could see uh, add the ability for people to see what other people are looking for. So if you're a shop owner and you can see that there are people looking for bread and you have surplus bread, you could take a picture and post it on the app and, and advertise the fact that you are selling this product. Um, hopefully they would offer like a collection or a delivery service. Um, and also um, a bit of validation. So it's not quite perfect. There's a chance of some of these photos that are uploaded, they could get abandoned if someone uh, ends throughout the process. Um, and we could also verify the timestamp as well. So if we can get geolocation uh, data from an image, we can obviously, you know, we can also get time information. So which hopefully we can stop people adding photos from say, you know, over a year ago, um, little bits and pieces and tweaks like that. Um, but yeah, so that's what's then. Uh, thank you very much. And I'd like to say a big massive shout out to our team. Um, and thank you for Dagmara for the amazing idea. Thank you.